What's going on YouTube? It's Tyler here and today I'm going to show you how to use the Grubhub driver app, um, how to get started if you're new, how to pick up shifts, and a few app glitches that I've discovered as a Grubhub driver for last year that you might not be aware of. Um, I'm also going to include in the description a link that, of another video that I made that shows you how to make the most money with Grubhub. So I'd recommend watching that as well and you can possibly gain a few extra bucks just by spending a few times watching it. So when you first open up the app, this is exactly what you'll see. There's not much to see um, unless you know how to use the app. If you tap the upper left corner, you'll see a menu and that'll allow you to see everything from scheduling, tasks, pay summary, program level, and boundaries. I'm gonna go over each of these right now. Scheduling, you click on that. That's gonna give you your current schedule. And if you're new, you're not gonna see any blocks at all. What you do is you hit update schedule and that will show you the blocks that are available. And I would keep checking that as often as possible if you don't have many blocks because people are always dropping them and they always are becoming available. Underneath scheduling is task, and all that pretty much does is send you back to the home screen. That'll come in handy if you're in the middle of a shift in order, and you click on pay summary or you're just checking out other things. If you click on tasks, it'll bring you back to the current order. Pay summary, pretty self-explanatory, gives you the information of how much money you've made in the week, um, starting from Monday and ending at the end of Sunday. You click on the days and see exactly how much you made in each day, um, what orders you accepted, what orders you missed, and everything like that. Underneath the pay summary is program level, and for the most part, there are three different program levels. There's Premiere, which gives you first access to new blocks on Thursday, so you'll get the freshest, newest blocks before anyone else does. Underneath Premiere is Pro. You get second access to new blocks on Friday. And then Partner is pretty much what's left. Um, on Saturday morning, you'll get whatever shifts are left after the Pro and Premiere drivers get it. Most of the time, I'm Partner, and I find that I get the shifts that I want mainly because there's still a little bit left and even if there isn't a shift that I wanted, people are always dropping them right before the start time of their shift and I end up picking up their shift and working the hours that I want. Now these requirements usually vary by market, so feel free to take a close look at those requirements, understand them, and you know try your best to get at least pro. Um, if you get partner, it's not the end of the world. You'll probably still end up making good money, getting the shifts you want. But if you find yourself, you know, not working as many shifts, even not getting as many blocks as you'd like to, definitely try your best to schedule the shifts you can work. Don't drop blocks and accept almost every delivery, as many deliveries as you can, so you can get up to Pro and Premier. Underneath program level is region boundaries, which is the zone that you're allowed to work in where you'll be getting orders and everything like that. Keep an eye out for it because if you're outside that region boundary, you will not receive orders and sometimes Grubhub won't tell you that you're outside of the region boundary. You can still sign on, but you just won't get any orders. So to sign on towards the top of the screen, you're gonna see it say unavailable with a little red dot next to it. You're gonna click on that and slide the unavailable tab to take in offers, and then you're officially signed on. Keep in mind, you do not need a scheduled shift in order to sign on. You'll just get many more orders if you have a block, but Grubhub will still send you orders occasionally, even if you're not on a shift, because or the queue sometimes overloads and there's not enough drivers. They'll send orders to people that aren't on a block. Next, you just wait until you get an order. A little yellow tab will open up and if you hit view, it'll show you the current offer that you can either accept or reject. Um, it'll give you the vicinity of the restaurant and the vicinity of where the customer is at along with the price that you'll be paid for doing that order. Most orders I'll accept because pretty much everyone tips, but there are a few orders I will not accept, for example, if it's more than like three miles away and the person isn't tipping, I just have the idea that, hey, someone else has gotta be closer and it's worth it for them, but it's not worth it for me. But as a result, I usually am a partner, you know, driver rather than premier pro status. 
Once you accept the order, the next thing to do is to figure out where the restaurant is. Even though you have the street address, you might not know exactly where it is. If you click on a little triangle by the map, it'll bring up your default maps application. For me, it's Google Maps, but if it's your first time using this app, it'll ask you what you wanna use, whether it be Waze, Google Maps, whatever map preference you have, and then you can hit the GPS and head on over to the restaurant. I recommend buying a dashboard or windshield mount to hold your phone onto when doing GPS. It'll make it more safe when you're driving and also make it so you're not as likely to miss any turns because you'll be looking at the road instead of looking down at your phone um, when there's a direction coming up. Once you arrived at the restaurant, you'll want to click again on the restaurant um, tab and hit arrive because if you don't hit arrive before you leave, Grubhub will not let you hit that button. It's to make sure that people aren't hitting arrived at restaurants when they haven't actually arrived, thus um, saying they delivered an order when they didn't and increasing their possible earnings. You're gonna go to the counter and tell them who you have the order for. In this case, I'd say I have an order for Josh G. Although the restaurants have an option to select the order when it's ready, most don't do it on time. So one way to figure out if the order is ready so that you can decide to keep your car on or turn it off and save gas is if you click on the customer's information, it'll show you when the order was placed. If you find that it's only been five, seven minutes when the order was placed and you got there, order's probably not ready. Um, so you could turn your car off so that way you're not wasting gas. But most times I find that the order is ready when you get there. I recommend double checking for drinks because there's a reason why food workers don't make $15 an hour. They're usually forgetful with stuff and it's better to double check the order before you leave than have to go back and pick up some which can be way on the other side of town. So once you receive the order from the restaurant, you can hit the got order tab and then leaving and then that will bring up the customer's information where they're at. Again, hit the little triangle and that'll bring up the GPS, mount your phone on the car mount and then get going to the customer. Once you get to the customer's location, you'll hit arrived. Keep note for any delivery instructions. Most times there aren't, but occasionally they'll say, call me, I can't hear the phone or call me. You know, I don't wanna upset the dogs. Um, in that case, you can give them a call. If the customer does not answer the door, you have the option of leaving the food at the door, but if it's an apartment complex or a work zone, there's physically no way that they'd find the food if you left it behind. I would recommend calling driver support, which you can do hitting there's a problem underneath the order and then saying it's something else, help, and that will put you in touch to driver support. In most cases, they'll tell you to wait five minutes while they reach out to the customer. And if the customer still does not get back to you, you can mark the order as delivered, keep the food in your car, and hopefully they call back. I find if they don't call back within the next half hour, I just say, you know, I'm not going back to deliver the order. And technically you can keep the food. Sometimes I'll hold on to the order for a good hour. And if they don't pick up, obviously there's something seriously wrong. They ordered food and they just don't want the food and that's their problem. So once you mark the order as delivered, you just wait for the next order to come in. I find that many cases the next order will come in within 30 seconds. If it does not, you have the option to just kind of slowly drive back to your place or drive back to an area where you know there are a lot of restaurants, you'll get an order if you're closer to a restaurant as opposed to if you're not close to the restaurant. Hopefully this video was helpful for you as a first time Grubhub driver or just as a Grubhub driver to get more familiar with the app. If this was helpful for you, make sure you give me a thumbs up, subscribe, comment, and hope you have a great day.